going on guys so uh, today I want to do a quick video talking about this Microtech I'm sending this back to Microtech to have it repaired I've had probably if I really had to guess accurately maybe 30 Microtechs you know um, and I've never had to send one back uh, when I got Microtech knives in the beginning when I was much younger I didn't really use them they were collectibles I was so afraid of you know uh, scratching them especially you know the ones with black finishes and stuff um, and I just want to retain their value. You know, when I was much younger, having more expensive knives was more of a collectible type thing. I had literally hundreds of knives that I can actually use, but when I had an expensive one, it was really like a huge deal. It's, you know, really expensive knife. So the early days of my experience with Microtech, it was all about playing with them, opening them, you know, looking at them, thinking they're cool, collecting them, and that was pretty much it, displaying them. I did display them uh, for many years. But these days, of course, I like to use my knives. Not to say I still don't collect things, because I definitely have, you know, collectible knives that don't get any use, which I know is kind of a shame, but hey, I still have that collector in me. Um, but this particular one I traded for, uh, specifically, not only to send back, but once I get it back from Microtech, regardless of whatever they do to it, uh, it's one to use, because it's actually kind of beat up. And I shouldn't really say beat up, because it's not abused, it's just used. Having scratches and nicks here and there, and having the... Uh, finish wear off on the knife and stuff. That's normal. That's normal use. It's not abused. It's not chipped out, broken, or anything like that. However, there is uh, currently two issues with this knife. The first issue, as I mentioned in the other video, is that sometimes, um, never while opening it, it opens totally fine, but sometimes when, like right there, I pulled down just in the right position where the actual switch here, it lifts up a little bit, just ever so slightly, so when I go to pull down, it feels like it's locked. Like I can't pull down, all right? I have to push down to kind of snap. You, you clearly heard that snap. It kind of pushes it back into its little groove. Whatever this is sitting in that allows it to rock back and forth, whatever grooves are cut out or track or whatever, uh, sometimes it just lifts up a little bit, okay? So that's one concern that I brought up with the uh, uh, person who I talked to, as well as it's missing a screw. Now, when I first sent my email, when you look on Microtech's website uh, talking about their uh, warranty and all that stuff, they want you to create a ticket. They want you to basically explain what's going on, give them information about the knife, um, the serial number on the pocket clip, uh, the date of manufacturer. So number one, they're ensuring that it's you know a genuine uh, Microtech product. And then you tell them their problem and then they'll give you a response, right? So my response was, and a very nice woman by the way, and originally I had a problem with their ticket system because of the base, when you put all your information for a ticket, there's that little thing that says like, I'm not a robot, and you click on it just to ensure that there's no bot that's creating constant tickets, whatever. And that was malfunctioning. I don't know what's going on, but it took me two or three days and actually calling them to try to figure out what was going on with that. And eventually, I mean, I called the woman um, and she was super, super nice on the phone and stuff. She's like, oh yeah, we've had some problems with that. I'm super sorry. Uh, she, she didn't say that like that. I'm super sorry. No, she was very professional. Um, what she, what I meant to say was that she did apologize, and um, she had uh, just mentioned that they're working on it. You know, they had talked to their webmaster, or whatever. Eventually, they just took that off the website for now. Okay, until they can fix it or figure it out. So I was able to get a ticket in, and I got a response today. And the person had said that normally. Um, they would recommend that I clean the knife first and if I still have a problem because a lot of different problems that arise from OTFs are obviously because they're dirty because you have this this open end okay and fine mechanisms going on inside little springs and pieces and stuff it's very common to get dirt and dust and all kinds of crap packed in there and then eventually it doesn't work so what they really want you to do is they want you to oil the heck out of the thing they give you a long list of instructions this is I cut this off but it was like almost two pages of instructions on how to clean one of these, okay? So they want you to start there. So you're not wasting your time, they're not wasting their time, you know, no one's wasting any money. It's like, look, clean your knife, nine out of 10 times, whatever problem you have, it'll go away. Your knife's probably dirty, right? But she had mentioned because I'm missing a screw, that the screw is covered in a warranty. So you can go ahead and send it in. All right, so I did want to read this to you because I think it was super important, all right? It says, all customers must create a support ticket for their knife prior to sending it in, which I did. Dealers or customers with multiple knives need to submit individual tickets for each knife. All right, it's important to note, if you happen to have two different knives with problems, you have to do individual tickets. I'm not sure if you if you can package them together. I don't think that matters, uh, but you know, I'd call just to be sure. But anyway, it says, uh, all knives sent in for warranty work uh, will be cleaned inside and out, oiled, and sharpened complimentary. That's very nice to know. 
Uh, below are some key points and instructions uh, to review prior to sending in your knife. So, number one, please refrain from using envelopes to send your knife. Envelopes are easier to tear and damage and can increase the risk of your knife being lost during transit. Please package your knife in a well padded box covered, uh, covering any exposed blade. All right, so that's important. Now, that goes just across the board. Uh, I've done a lot of trades with people, and more times than not, they use boxes and stuff. But once in a blue moon, I'll get a knife and an envelope or something. I'm thinking, geez, I'm, I'm glad it got here because it didn't look like it would. Um, so next thing, please avoid USPS shipping. Now, this was, <laughs> I'm glad I read this because I pretty much exclusively ship through USPS. I love USPS. I've never, I'm mean, not going to what, I've never had uh, problems with USPS. Um... But there, here's the reason why. We recommend using carriers like UPS or FedEx due to the reliability of having tracking information. So I can't fault them for that. USPS tracking does stink. Okay, there's been uh, times where I received a package and then randomly got an email like two weeks later saying, hey, you got your package. Yeah, I know, that was two weeks ago. I know this sounds kind of weird, but I've gotten over uh, staring at tracking. Now, early on, let me back up a little bit here. Early on in my uh, trading career, you know, if I did a trade and someone sent me a tracking number, I'm like, I was updating it every, you know, 20 minutes and seeing when the, when the thing was going to get delivered. <laughs> that gets old quickly, especially if you get tons of packages like I do. So what I do now is when I do a trade, you know, it shows up when it shows up. I, I don't look at tracking. I don't care about tracking. Uh, if I feel like it's taking a long time, and what I mean by a long time is like a week, two weeks, then I'll look into tracking and see what's going on. But generally speaking, I'm not like obsessed staring at it, you know. Uh, however, for the people who are, I've shipped, you know, packages and they're like, oh, the tracking says that it's only, you know, processing or the tracking says this, the tra and then like they get it that day. So yes, USPS tracking is not the most accurate. I do prefer FedEx and UPS tracking over that. So I totally understand that. But personally, it's a huge inconvenience. Uh, I wanted to send this out today. I don't have the time to go to a UPS location today. Um, you know, I know there's a Dropbox that's a little bit closer than the actual U UPS store. FedEx is not, I mean, same deal. I think they have a Dropbox somewhere around by me, but I like to physically walk into the store and, and mail it that way. So I'll get this out within the next couple days, but, you know, I have to find a different box because all my boxes are, are generally uh, postal boxes that I have. Um, I'll have to reuse a box that I get in the mail or something. But anyway, just that's a good note. I don't think that you, like, you can't use U USPS. It's just like... They're trying to avoid this situation. Hey, I sent my knife in, where is it? And they're like, I don't know, why don't you track it? And then you track it and USPS shipping says that, you know, I don't know, it, it's misinformation or it's not accurate or it's not up to date. They don't want to deal with that. So they found that uh, UPS or FedEx is better. I get it, you know, I prefer USPS, but whatever. So I'll ship this UPS as per their request. So next, it says, please mark the ticket number clearly on the box. We, uh, we identify your knife the moment it arrives to our shipping department with the ticket number. Please mark it on the exterior of the box to avoid return issues. Okay, very important key. Next, it says, uh, please include a letter with the information inside your box. Please describe your issue briefly and include your name and return shipping address. Okay, also very important. And then, of course, they have where to send it. All right, there's your, where there's the actual address, and obviously on top, the ticket number real big. All right, because that's how they identify. They, they don't identify you, they identify your knife. Okay, so they're not getting a package from Jeff. They don't care about Jeff. Jeff means nothing. The ticket number is what means everything. Okay, so that has to be nice and visible. I would put that on your letter as well. And then last one, it says, uh, please review our hazmat policy for sending knives with blood. For the safety of our employees, please do not send in a knife which contains blood. We are required to implement hazmat protocols for a $100 fee. Keep this in mind prior to sending your knife, otherwise it will be returned. All right, so let's stop there for a second and discuss this a little further, because that sounds strange, right? Why would you have blood in your knife? Um, if it was a battle song, you're almost guaranteed to have some blood, right? If you have a live blade, <laughs> most of them out there do. However, something like this, or just your average pocket knife, I mean, you, why would you have blood on it? Well, I don't know. Things happen. You cut yourself an accident. Uh, now, the last knife I would think anyone would ever use hunting, you know, or skinning game would be an OTF, but you never know. Maybe someone out there is rocking an Ultra Tech when they're skinning their squirrels or deer or whatever. Um, that's just important to know, okay? For their safety, if there's blood on there, they don't know if it's infected with something or whatever, so they go through whatever process they go through, and they're going to charge you 100 bucks for that. All right, so I would take extra precaution to make sure there's no blood on your knife just in case. All right, so 
Um, yes, more information. Now this is this is stuff that you need to know too, setting your knife in. So the left box here says our current turnaround time. Now obviously it's printed on the other side, so I gotta keep flipping it back and forth. So it says, uh, we are currently serving knives within four to six weeks, case by uh, case. This is due to the volume of warranty claims as well as being uh, in season. Please keep in mind custom knives and 90s and early 2000 Microtechs. Uh, go to our veteran technicians that build them for repairs, uh, which can increase the lead time to two months or longer. Thanks for your patience. So understand that um, this one is a 2017. I don't think that's... Uh, you know, it's not necessary because it's not a 90s version or a 2000s version. But they're basically saying, like, we have a couple guys that know these knives that have been around forever. But we only have a couple guys that do that. Or maybe two guys or maybe one guy. Who knows? So it'll be longer processing time. They're saying up to two months. You know, turnaround time for, for warranty work could be all over the place. I, I sent in my, um, uh, what was it, the Piranha knife. Got that back real quick. It was like nothing. No big deal. They got it. They fixed it. They sent it back. Boom, done, that was it. The case knife, I just got back. That was still fairly quick, even though they have a ton of, they're a huge company, ton of knives going in, in and out and all kinds of stuff, right? Very quick turnaround time. Uh, Benchmade that I sent in, slow turnaround time because they are such a large company, the second largest company in the world, a knife company. Um, they have a lot of knives that come in and out, you know? So that was a longer wait time, that was a couple weeks. So it's just good to know right up front, hey, this might take a while, you know? So anyway, let's move on. Uh, your knife may have uh, avoided warranty or out of warranty damage, okay? Should the repair department determine your warranty has been voided uh, or that damage is not covered under warranty, please see the limited warranty information that accompanied your knife at the time of purchase. Uh, you will be contacted for payment prior to completing services. So very straightforward, hey, if we don't think this is covered, if we think you broke it, you did something you weren't supposed to, we're gonna call you and you gotta give us some money for that if you want us to fix it. Understandable. All right, so next. Uh, shipping and care, or excuse me, shipping and carrying laws are different. Be informed. We can ship to any state, okay? It's important to note that because some companies won't. Uh, but please refer to your state laws and be sure uh, you are informed about carrying laws in your current state. It is your responsibility to be well informed. This information excludes distributors, dealers, active military, and law enforcement. All right, so um, they're basically saying it's not up to them to figure out whether you can have an automatic knife or carry it. That's up to you. We're gonna ship it back because it's our product and you know, if you need a fix, we'll fix it, whatever. Uh, but that's up to you. It's, it's basically you know, clearing them of any kind of like lawsuits or problems and stuff. Uh, in Pennsylvania, it's totally legal to have this. That's why I'm sending it in. They're gonna send it back. That's fine. Technically, I'm not supposed to carry it, but I don't need to carry it in order to get it fixed. So, uh, our knives require signature pickup. That's the next part. Please be sure that a signee is available at the time of delivery. Otherwise, the knife will be returned to our facility. Please refer to your tracking number to coordinate a time. So they're saying that when they ship the stuff back, they always request a signature confirmation. That is to ensure that an adult receives this knife, okay? And it covers them so that you can't say, hey, my knife was lost. So when you receive this, you have to sign for it. When you sign for it, it covers them for insurance policy and all that kind of stuff. But also it ensures that an adult is, uh, is getting this knife back, okay? Because regardless of the laws, you should be an adult if you have one of these. Uh, or at least of age to have a knife, etc. cetera. Um, so that's an, another important note. If you're gonna ship this in, it might be, you know, two weeks later, three weeks later, four weeks later, it's going to be kind of hard, you know, to, to make sure you're home for that. So just something to kind of plan out and figure out. Obviously, you can call the company, keep in contact with them for that. If you're like never home, make sure that's something you talk to them about. Very, very important point. It'd be a shame if they, with their process, fixed it, shipped it back to you only so that you're not home and then it goes back to them again. Okay. In that case, they might charge you for shipping uh, a second time. I don't really know for sure about charging you, but I can see some problems arising there. And the last section here, you will receive uh, tracking information from UPS directly as soon as your knife ships. All right, so again, going back to being available when your knife ships out, you should be you know, checking your emails or whatever. Once you have the information that they're gonna ship it back, make sure you're home so you can sign for that or someone is at your residence so they can sign for you. All right, please keep in mind the turnaround indicator is the clearest estimate of when your knife will ship, so please refer to the lead time provided. 
If the lead time has passed, reach, reach out at that time. The moment the knife ships, UPS will email you tracking information. All right, and then there's a little asterisk here. Please note, if upon receival, we determine your knife is counterfeit. Now, this is important because I did this is the first thing I read on their website. Um, if they determine your knife is a counterfeit, we can return the knife to you, but we will first have to remove all of the Microtech markings. Additionally, we will require a payment of $15 to cover return shipping, as this is not under the usual warranty for authentic repairs. So what they're saying is if you have a fake Microtech, and unfortunately, some people don't know if they have a real one or not. Maybe you got it from a friend or as a gift or who knows what. Um, and you're questioning, yeah, I don't know if this is real or not. You should really do some research and try to figure that out before you ship it to them. Because if you ship them a fake one, a counterfeit one, they're, they're telling you right up front. They're going to, like if I ship this and it was fake, they're going to grind this down. All right. They're going to, you know, maybe blast the pocket clip so all their markings are gone completely. They're going to uh, blast the blade so the blade is sterile. Because all of their proprietary logos, all that kind of stuff, they own that. And they have the right to uh, take that off your knife. So they're going to literally change your knife so it doesn't say Microtech or have a logo anywhere. And then they're gonna charge you 15 bucks to ship it back because why should they pay for it, you know? So yeah, I wanna make this video because obviously there's information here that I wouldn't have just known, you know? It's not as easy as just like, you know, finding the address and shipping it off and hoping for the best, right? There's definitely a process you go through with these knives. I never sent one to Microtech back. Uh, this is my very first one. We'll see how the experience goes. If anything is going to cost money, I will pay for it. I do want this fixed and I want the, the screw replaced. I'd like to see the switch uh, fixed. I don't know exactly what they can do with that. We'll see. Um, but yeah, I'm gonna go through this process, but there's a couple key points here that I just did not know and you would not know unless you read you know, their website and read all the information on sending a knife back. Number one, you have to get that ticket. It gets the ball rolling. It gives a, a serial number essentially to your knife in your case, right? Um, the blood thing is huge. You know, you may not know there's blood. I don't know. You cut yourself once and there's a little blood here or whatever. They get it. They notice it. They have to go through this process. If you want your knife back, you got to give them a hundred bucks for that, that hazmat cleaning process, whatever that is. I mean, that's important to know. Check your knife. Make sure there's no blood on it. Uh, another key point was that no USPS. I mean, I would have shipped this USPS if I had not read that. Um, you know, so like some of these things, I'm not going to go over each one. I just obviously made a whole video on it. But it's important to know this stuff. So I'm going through this process. I'm gonna ship it back. When I receive it, of course, we'll go over it. We'll talk about everything at that time. Um, but in the meantime, I want you guys to let me know your experiences. If you've ever shipped a knife back to Microtech, write down in the comments, tell me what knife you shipped back, what the problem was, what they did for you. Was it part of the warranty, you know, covered or not covered? So anyway, that's it. Just gonna uh, go ahead and give you another detailed shot of this knife. Um, I know they're going to replace the screw. That's no big deal. Again, not sure what they're going to do about this uh, button. I'm not sure if maybe there's something that's stuck under there. That I mean, I went through the cleaning process and it didn't it didn't fix the issue. But who knows? Maybe their extensive cleaning process um, will you know in fact fix that. Perfect. I mean, I haven't had any misfires with this, which is great. I mean, you can you could fire this as much as your thumb can take it. Obviously. <laughs> You know, it, it wears in your thumb a little bit. Um, it's just once in a while. Once in a while, it's just, I get it just right, like right there. You know, it just, it's locked up. And again, it's because it just popped off that track just ever so slightly. It's not going to fall out or anything, you know, but there's enough play left and right. And obviously up and down where it's supposed to move. But there's enough left and right play that every now and then it just, it gets stuck there. And then that's all. Just push it back down. It's fine. So we'll see. We'll go ahead and. Send this in and uh, I'll keep you up to date. I'll let you know what's going on. But again, we'll look at the exact knife just in a little detail here in case they do change something. You see a lot of wear on the front here, not as much on the back, but still some scratches towards the front. All right, pot clips in good shape. All right, obviously little dings and stuff, a little wear in the corners, some carry. Big old scratch in the front from something. Again, that missing screw. And that's about it. So there you go. There's the Microtech Ultratech. Pretty cool. Love the knife. Uh, you know, I'm going to miss it. I've been playing with it ever since I got it. So I'll miss it for the next who knows how long. But when I get back, we'll do an update video and we'll see what they did for me. So that's all. Thanks for watching, guys. Hope you have a wonderful day. And I'll see you tomorrow with a brand new video. Take care.